Welcome. I'm the Deadwood Jedi, and this is another Raid Shadow Legends video. I'm very excited about this one because I finally did what I didn't think I was actually going to be able to do, which is use White Dryad Nia to make the slowest unkillable team we have yet. Nobody is 200 speed or faster. It's pretty remarkable. I think it works for Ultra Nightmare, it works for Nightmare, and I think it works for Brutal, though I haven't had any time to actually test that, so I don't know if I'm going to be, get a chance to. But it definitely works for Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare, which is pretty remarkable. It's a bit of a tricky comp, though. This is one of the tougher ones to actually build and make work because it's very reliant upon targeting mechanics, both for your allies as well as the clan boss, as well as healing mechanics, which includes using some uh, sets like Regeneration and Mortal to make this work, and Life Steal for that matter. So it's definitely a trickier set to build, but it is so slow and it's so cool i think too um so there's a lot of potential to making this type of a team work for you and i definitely know this can two key ultra nightmare you're probably never going to be able to do better than that um and most of you are probably going to be able to three key it's very you know being able to two key is going to be pretty gear dependent but it's definitely something that's available for you so i'm really excited about this um and excited to show you guys that I often get asked, how do I come up with these speed tunes like today's, which is very complex. And I think it all comes back to my old modding experience, actually, where I would play whatever game, whether it's Baldur's Gate back in the day or Civilization or even Europa Universalis. I would take these games and modify them a little bit so my civilization or my country or my champion would be just a little bit more personal for me. And I had a lot of fun doing that. And that's what I did with my raid team. I wanted it to be just a little bit more personal. I wanted my clan boss team to work a little bit better so I made the calculator I, unfortunately I kind of hit a wall there I didn't have the know-how to make it a full-blown program I could put on a website like I have right now on my own I had to get some outside help for that if I knew then what I know now I would have known that a program like today's sponsor Southern New Hampshire University could have been monumental in me understanding exactly what I was doing and being able to do it on my own, their game development program is gonna enable you to do that very same thing. The SNHU program teaches you how to make games, whether we're talking about game experiences through realistic and dynamic gameplay, or game AI, game physics, 2D, 3D graphics, uh, interface, all that stuff's gonna be taught there. You'll learn the programming languages like C++ or Java, as well as 3D modeling and texturing uh, with different game art softwares. Um, you also learn how to research, develop, and maybe even contribute to the advances in this industry, which I think is really cool to be able to do. I mean, all the courses are taught by real world experts with real world experience, so you're gonna get learning from professionals themselves on how to go about doing this. So if this interests you, go ahead and use the link that I'm providing. It'll be in the pinned comment description of this video and get more information about becoming a programmer. It's so funny that I'm doing this promotion right now because I was just at a Christmas party talking to an old restaurant friend of mine I hadn't seen since the pandemic started. And I was telling her how much, you know, I took this leap of faith and content creation has really changed my life as a career. And she was telling me how she kind of did the same thing and became a programmer and how good that's been for her life. And so if you guys are looking to make that kind of a change, take a leap of faith, or maybe just play video games or try to seize a dream of yours, I really recommend clicking on that link and checking out the game development program over at Southern New Hampshire University. Let's take a moment and talk about the skills that are needed to make this work because it is a complex build. Now, not only do we have a lot of regen sets, we have immortal sets, we have lifesteal sets, healing is going to be crucial. And it really comes down to the skill, like, you know, getting the stun to go right. So I want to point out some of the skills. And as we go into some of these runs, I'll explain a little bit of what's going on here. But on Godseeker Neri, this A1 skill heals the ally with the lowest HP by 5% of their max HP. That's really, really important to know. Now, hopefully Manny is going to be the lowest HP in this comp the whole time, but we need to account for that extra 5% HP that he's getting. So that is important. Now, this does not heal Godseeker Neri. That is important to kind of keep in mind as we're going through this, but that, that's an important skill. Godseeker's A2 is a big heal skill. This is one of the reasons why we're turning this off. We don't want that extra healing. The A3 is this Rise of Glory, revives a dead ally with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. That's also really important because whenever we're reviving Maneater 
or we're using God Seeker skills, we need to know what's happening here because we need to cool down the appropriate champion. It's not always going to be God Seeker Aniri. In this case, though, when she uses Rise of Glory, we need that cool down because this is on a four turn cooldown. They're all going on a one one ratio. We have to get that cool down so she can use it again. Then we have the passive ability here. Now, it one, increase the amount of healing allies receive. It's great. But two, if an ally is about to get killed, We'll preempt that by placing a revive on death on them. So that revive on death skill, this is also on a four turn cooldown. It's not gonna happen every single time, but it will happen. So revive on death will revive somebody with 30% turn meter and 30% HP. That's really important, okay? So that 30% HP is crucial to know because again, we need Manny to be the lowest HP among us, right? If he's getting the revive from this skill, from the passive, what does it not do? Doesn't cool down his main skills. And that's one of the best parts about Rise of Glory from Godseeker and Neri. This actually resets the cooldowns of the skills. So every time Man Eater dies and is revived by Godseeker, his skills are revived. You can cast Ancient Blood again. Well, if the pass is what's reviving him and not this skill, that doesn't happen. That's when we need White Dryad Nia to cool down Man Eater instead of Godseeker and Neri. So this is kind of a really tricky. We're threading the needle here on our HP. Basically, we need Godseeker and Neri to have more than 30% HP. So when the revive, the passive goes off, it's she's not getting the cooldown. It's going to Maneater. But she needs to have less than 50% HP. So when she uses her skill, she's getting the cooldown and not Maneater. It's really tricky to make this work, but we figured it out. Now, obviously, Maneater does the Ancient Blood, Unkillable, and Block debuffs for two turns. And then White Dryad Nia is the other one we need to focus on. First off, let's look at the passive ability. Whenever this champion's healed, heals and each ally except this champion by 20% of that heal. So that means when she's getting 1,000 heal, everybody else is getting 200, right? This is going to be really important to kind of keep in mind. A1 ability uh, doesn't really do anything, right? Just attacks all enemy, cool, fine. But I do have Life Drinker on her. That means she is going to get a little bit of a heal off that, which means everybody's going to get a little bit of a heal off that. And then we have Riotous Revival. This removes all debuffs from target ally and heals them 40% of their max HP. If the target of the skill is not this champion, decreases the cooldown of all the target skills by two turns. This one's going to be really important. We need to make sure that this is happening to a specific ally, right? Sometimes it's Godseeker, sometimes it's Maneater. And this one's going to be tricky. Uh, one, it's a huge heal, and that can be problematic. But more importantly, because it's a heal ability, the targeting of White Dryad is really important here. I really appreciate you coming by to watch this video. And if you enjoy it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And of course, if you enjoyed today's music, we have that Soundstripe link down below in the pinned comment description of this video, along with my code, Deadwood Jedi to save yourself 15%. And of course, if you're looking for account work, you can find that on my website, deadwoodjedi.com. This is the Ultra Nightmare setup we have here. You'll notice Godseeker and Neri were totally taking away the A2 skill. We're using the revive, Rise to Glory, the Revive skill here. This is the one that we're going to be really focused on to start off with. That needs to be prioritized, absolutely. Then we have Maneater. We have Ancient Blood as our prioritized skill. He's going to use that right off the jump, so we don't have to worry about that. And then White Dryad Naya, we're actually going to open with the A1. We want to turn off that A3. That's always important. We don't want ally protection out here. And then the Riotous Revival is going to be a prioritized skill. We are going to have to interrupt the run to get an extra A1 skill in there. But after that, it is going to be pretty much full auto on Ultra Nightmare. And then Chani and Draco, it's just about timing out their skills so we can get the most damage in. You can use any DPS here. You don't need to use Chani. You don't need to use Draco. There's one caveat. You cannot, absolutely cannot use somebody that is weak affinity. If the stun goes to anybody besides Maneater, it's bad news for this run. So you absolutely want to have people that are strong affinity or neutral affinity only for this team. Okay, so we're going to jump into the run here. We're going to start immediately with the Ancient Blood skill of Maneater. After that, I have the first turn all set up, right? It's full auto, basically using Nia's A1. We're using Godseeker's A1 for the entirety of this fight. And then on the turn right before the stun, you're going to have to manual it for one turn to make sure White Dryad Nia does her A1 as well. That's going to be really important, obviously. Outside of that, this thing works like a breeze and should run on full auto. It's going to be really important to balance out those HP levels to make sure that Maneater has the lowest percentage HP, and that's going to allow us to actually run this on auto, is if he's the lowest percentage HP all the time. We have 
uh, both uh, Nia as well as Godseeker in regen sets. It's going to allow them to heal up. Nia actually has an immortal set on too. And then we have our two DPSs in lifesteal gear. And this is actually really important. We don't use lifesteal very much, but in this case, it's going to be crucial because I want to make sure they're not targeted by the clan boss whatsoever. And so that's going to be our balance right there. Now, as we go through this run, you're going to see this happens again and again. Maneater gets stunned. Nia's going to cleanse it and reset his cooldown so he's able to do the Ancient Blood ability again and again and again. Maybe I didn't explain this, but that Ancient Blood skill is on a five-turn cooldown. Well, we're going on a one-one ratio. The cycle of clan boss skills is three turns, so reducing that cooldown by two is perfect, right? This is a perfect pairing between them. The trick is just getting the targeting. And so this is why we have an immortal set on Godseeker and Neri, and we have an immortal and, I'm sorry, we have a uh, regen set on Godseeker, and we have an immortal and a regen set on Nia to make sure that they always will have more HP than Maneater does when he gets revived. Now, this is important. If Godseeker is using her skill, we need Godseeker to get that cooldown in. You know, I want to reiterate this so she can't have more than 50% HP. This is why one regen set is all we want on her. I don't have actually any masteries on her, but more importantly, I do not have life trigger. I don't want her to heal up anymore. This is another reason why we actually don't have White Dryad Nia in lifesteal gear, because if she heals up too much, it's going to heal Godseeker up too much. We don't want that either. She does have life drinker, but she hits so softly, it's not going to really make an impact on us in a negative way. Um, in fact, it's a little bit helpful for us because it allows Godseeker to heal just a little bit above that 30% threshold, which is important because obviously when when the passive ability of hers goes off and Maneater's revived, he's revived that 30% HP. We need Godseeker to be above that. And so that's one little way to help her stay a little bit above that number. Also, when Nia heals uh, with the Immortal or the Regen, that is also going to heal Godseeker a little bit more too, which helps keep her above that 30% threshold. So all these little things kind of add up to make this team work. It's a complex baby, but it does work, which is surprising, even to me. Uh, I almost gave up on this. This is why this is the slowest and killable team out there. There's nothing slower than this. I mean, it's crazy that we're on a 1-1 ratio and we can actually stay unkillable with this team. I'm I'm pretty shocked by it and happy about it. So, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of impressive. In any case, though, this is, I think, pretty solid. You're able to have two DPS. Uh, as long as you're not weak affinity, they're gonna be extremely good for you. That's enough to get to a two key. If you can fill a debuff bar full of poisons, that's a three key on Ultra Nightmare very easily, and often is a two key if you can build a little damage in there as well. Another benefit to this build is that obviously you can build both you can build actually all of these champions for damage because we don't have life drinker on Godseeker. we don't have it on man eater we can build them full damage obviously white dread nia is doing very little damage but it does so it doesn't matter how much we build her for she we can go ahead and let her do her attacks it's not going to hurt us at all and if you're really struggling for bringing poisons in or something you could easily put her in a toxic set and get some extra work that way so this is a pretty cool team. I'm pretty excited about it. I'll let you guys watch the rest of this run and we'll come back to talk at the end. So as you can see, we were able to two key Ultra Nightmare. Now, one thing, I don't have any masteries on Godseeker Neri. That's easily another four or five million, easily, that we would be adding to this. Um, and Godseeker Neri can hit. So there's a lot uh, we could still do with this team. Um, but I thought this was pretty impressive. Obviously, it's not the greatest team in the world. I mean, this is the slowest clan boss team. Like It doesn't get any slower than this. And Nia does literally zero damage. So 
there's obviously some limitations as well. I didn't even fully gear out Maneater, you know, to make this work just a little bit easier. So there's obviously some ways to work on it, improve it, and build it up even more. But I'm pretty impressed with this squad and this team, quite frankly. And I think you guys should be too. So let's take a moment and talk about the champions here and how I built them and, you know, why I did the way I did. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the stats. You guys can see those. But there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're building this team. One, everybody needs to be at least 179 speed or faster, right? But somewhere between 179 and 190 is going to be crucial for this. Now, this is what works on Ultra Nightmare. It works on Nightmare doing this, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I have all my champions right about that 180. 182 183 mark here as far as speed goes another thing to keep in mind godseeker neary needs to go fastest and first white dread nia needs to go second as long as you have that order you should be in really good shape and then man eater does need to be at 192 speed right uh that's going to be pretty specific it has to be faster than 191 um and you don't want them so too fast because you want them to go last in the comp every time so i think 192 is really the sweet spot there you could probably get away with a little bit faster 193 or something like that but um it's pretty it's pretty close to that right that's really where we want to be with this um as far as everybody else i'm just building them for damage um yeah so you can get man eater i think all the way up to like 197 i want to say yeah 197 seems to work any faster than that though it is going to start messing with things so somewhere between 192 and 197 should work just fine for him um and keep him going last in the comp right um so yeah it's pretty great as far as like how we built them right i built them all as much damage as i could just in the quick time I did to build this, right? I was more worried about getting the build to work than anything else. The one thing I want you to pay attention to are the sets and the mastery. So if we look at Godseeker Neary, you'll notice I have that one regen set on, right? And zero mastery. You cannot take Life Drinker on her. Don't Definitely don't want that. And we need the regen set so she can heal up over that 30%. Regen gives you 15% every turn. Doing that twice, once before the stun, once after the stun, We'll give her that 30%, so she has more HP than a revived Maneater off the, her passive ability, especially when you factor in that White Dryad Nia is going to give some additional healing due to her passive ability as well. She'll be well over that 30% threshold. It is important, though, you have to get above that 30% threshold, right? You need Nia to do that additional healing. That is important. But also not so high that she goes above 50%. So when she uses her skills, she'll still be the lowest HP. If we look at White Dryad Nia, she also has a regen set, but she has an immortal set as well. And this is important because if both her and Godseeker have that regen set on, it gets a little, it's a little bit close. And I've seen White Dryad Nia sometimes reset her own skills. So adding the Immortal set gives her just a little bit more HP healing. And that's going to push her above God Seeker Neary because she shares her heal with her, right? Right. So if she heals 15% every time, that's 30%. But she's sharing 20% of that with God Seeker. That's why God Seeker will actually have more HP than her. So we need to give her that Immortal set. So she's healing 36% instead. And then God Seeker maybe getting a percentage of that but it's not going to be enough to actually outpace the healing that uh, Nia is getting herself right um, and so that's going to be really important as far as building these two champions out that's actually pretty crucial outside of that we have man eater here and you can see didn't even fully gear him out it's not important all I want to do is get to the speed and try to add as much damage as I can to the build one important thing that will just help a lot with your builds keep his HP and or keep his defense as low as you possibly can by doing that he'll take more damage early which will allow you to hit auto a lot sooner right uh when we talk about chani and draco you'll notice i have chani in a full lifesteal set right and this is really important we want to obviously build as much damage as possible but i do need to heal up as much as possible every turn and so at least before the stun and so putting her in a lifesteal set is crucial same thing with draco morph i have draco in a lifesteal set as well obviously the accuracy the damage is there for both of them but that lifesteal set is going to be really massive as far as making sure that they're healing up enough so they don't take the stun and they're not getting the heal from nia those two things are absolutely crucial so we have to accommodate both of those right and that's part of the reason why i built them the way that i did the real trick to this build is of course managing the hp levels we need nia to target man eater when he gets the passive revive and his skills aren't cooled down when 
Godseeker and Neri revise Maneater with her skills, we need Nia to target Godseeker and Neri to reset her cooldowns. And so the trick is making sure that whoever we need to get cooled down by Nia is going to have the lowest amount of HP percentage wise, right? This is why we have a regen set on Godseeker and Neri. When the passive goes up and Maneater is revived from a revive on death past, you know, the, the buff itself, he's going to revive with 30% HP. And of course, when he revives from that passive buff, his skills aren't reset. And that's when we need White Dryad Nia to, you know, heal him. In order for that to be the case, in order for the least amount of HP, we need Godseeker Neri to have a regen set and take two turns before White Dread Need goes. This is why Godseeker Neri is going first in this comp. She'll take one turn before the stun and then one turn after the stun before White Dread Nia actually takes her turn. And so because of that, she'll have at least 30% HP. Plus with the passive healing that White Dread Nia gives and Life Drinker you know, mastery on uh, Godseeker, which we don't necessarily need, but if we have it on, we'll guarantee that Godseeker Neri has more than 30% HP, and then Maneater, when he gets revived by that passive, will have less and be targeted by White Dryad Nia. In the other case, and this happens more often, Godseeker Neri is actually doing the reviving, and when she uses her revive skill, it fully resets the skills of Maneater, which is great, but then we need Godseeker Neri to have her cooldowns reset, because those are on four-turn you know, cooldowns. This works because of that 30% HP that Godseeker is going to have. She revives Maneater to 50% HP. And so as a result, Godseeker and Neri will have the least amount of HP. Now, the trick, of course, is White Dread Nia. She also will heal herself, which is a problem because it doesn't reset anybody's cooldowns and it becomes a big issue. The key to that working is having White Dread Nia not just with one revive set, but also with an immortal set. This means that her HP will be at least 36%. And that's going to be plenty, and that'll definitely be enough to make sure she has more HP percentage-wise than Godseeker and Neri as well. This prevents her from healing herself, and she will only heal, in this case, Maneater or Godseeker. And that's the key to making this whole team work here, is that kind of combination of buffs and skills and gear sets. This is also why we have Life Drinker on our two DPS, to ensure they always have well over... The amount of HP, so they're never targeted by White Dread Nia either. I played around with this in a lot of different permutations, and a lot of things can screw this up. Making sure that we have those abilities at those levels is key. Now, I did try White Dread Nia with Lifesteal gear uh, in order so she could heal up fully. The issue is she doesn't do nearly enough damage to give herself a significant heal every single time. She really needs those War Master procs to happen. Sometimes they don't. If she has less HP than Godseeker and Neri or Man Eater, she'll end up healing herself and our whole team will be thrown out of whack because we're not reducing the cooldowns when we need to. So it's crucial that we have those regen sets on both White Dread, Nia, and Godseeker and Neri so we have a consistent HP base on them and they're healing up the right amount every time. Now you might find that you're not healing up enough with your DPS champions and the, even in lifesteal gear. A big part of that is gonna make sure you have 100% crit rate so that you're always getting a significant heal uh, on those champions. Also having them at a really low HP percentage or HP total will mean that whatever they, whatever amount of you know damage they are healing themselves for will be more pronounced on those champions, right? Obviously having good damage dealers will help that a lot as well. But the big thing is going to be making sure they have 100% crit rate. Even if they're not really big damage dealers, it will help a lot. And then lifesteal gear is, of course, going to be really important. Champions like Frozen Banshee might not be optimal just because their raw damage is so low. Now, if you encounter problems with this team, you're trying to run it and you're counting problems, Nia's not, you know, reviving or cooling down, I should say, healing the right champion, one of the things you're probably going to need to do is like you would do on Nightmares, actually manual the first few turns up till around turn 9. After turn 9, like on turn 10 and beyond, the clan boss starts to hit hard enough where you can probably rely on Nia to do all the healing on her own. If that's not the case, what you need to do is just manual her heal really that simple right unclick auto right after the stun hit have nia manually cool down a man eater until man eaters either low enough for her to do it on her own and taking the stun or until uh man eaters dying and getting the revive at that point you should be able to click auto and it'll work on its own 
this is a very complex kind of build, right? You need some specific things. You need very specific sets on all of these champions. But if you can do that, I mean, the speeds are very reasonable. I think I have attack boots on most of my champions here or defense boots or whatever. You can do this with speed boots and it becomes very easy to build this type of team. You don't need great gear in order to make it work because so much of this is based off of percentage skills, right? Man Eater is still going to keep you unkillable and affinity friendly throughout the entirety of this fight. As long as you have the right sets on these champions and make sure that the people taking the stun are not are not Nia, actually just not Nia. As long as it's not Nia up into the point where it works on auto, you're going to be in great shape. Life steal on your main on your DPS champions and make sure they have 100% crit rate so they actually heal off of it will be massive and then Neo and has that regen set and immortal set and you can have on uh on god seeker an immortal set too and all that should work just fine so it's a pretty fun team i actually kind of enjoyed building it um it's obviously not something i'm gonna run for my account but i think for a lot of you that are really struggling i i notice in a lot of my takeovers people have good champions they don't have great gear. More importantly, they don't have great speed in their gear, but they have a wide range of sets. This could be an option for you to build, to get to that level where you're starting to at least take down clan boss every day on Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare, right? Maybe it won't be great results right from the start, but being able to build a team really slow can be very helpful for a lot of people. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show this. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Boy. It took me a long time to figure this one out. So hopefully you guys took a, got some enjoyment out of it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.